All right, so you can really do anything you want to with this time. Um, you can write a diary. You could write on a piece of paper. You could write notes. You could write a bulleted list. Um, I was just recalling an incident that I thought maybe I would write about today, and I forgot one important piece, and I've been kind of puzzling over it today. So however you want to do it. Some people like to talk before they write. Some people like to get right to writing. So if there's anybody, oh, yeah, Louise passed out an idea. We could do that or we could just start. Well, I didn't, you were frozen. You said Louise and then the rest we didn't hear. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah I just wanted to make sure that you were recording and you were. So, um, yeah, if there's anybody who would like to talk about their the topic they're thinking about first, you can do that. If the rest of you want to dive in and start writing. Did you say you passed out an idea at the beginning that I missed? I'm sorry for being late. No, actually, it. I've been thinking about an idea today. It was a an incident that happened to me with an old, old boyfriend. And uh, I thought I might write about it to remember it, but I forgot one piece of it and I've been puzzling over it today. So maybe writing about it will help me remember. Anyway, does it, would anybody like to talk first or you want to just dive into writing? Are you accepting things that were written last week? Of course. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long are we going to write? Well, let's say, how about let's, what about 10 minutes to start? And then we'll see if people need more time. Maybe, wow. we, what do you think, Ethel? Is that too long? Maybe a five minute quick grab? Well, I don't, I don't think it's too long at all. Oh, She's oh. thinking it's too short. Oh, okay. So, um, it's already I 10 after two. How late, how late are you gonna go to 2.45? 2.45, and we can go over a little bit if we want to. Uh, and people are going to share what they write if they feel like it? Right. Okay. 15? I don't know. If you want to have time for people to read, probably 10, probably 10 is good. Okay. Well, let's try 10, and then if everybody wants a little bit more time, we can extend it. And, uh, and then those who want to can share. You don't have to share. You can share just the idea, not read. You can read word for word, whatever you'd like to do. All right. So we're going to start writing then. Ready. Oh, you're muted, Jeannie. While while people are sharing, I think it would be fine if you continue to write if you're right in the middle of something. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Louise, it's off. I would love to share. Great. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Louise. I had the opportunity to visit the Lamas Foundation in Taos, New Mexico in the summer of 2019. I wanted to join a workshop that had been running for 20 years called Women Singing in Circle. It was led by four powerful women singer song leaders. The land was situated high in the mountains on what I call a plateau. I could look out at the distant valley and hills pine trees far above who whis whispered in the wind. It was hot during the day, but the night became very cold. I never thought I'd be someone to say I didn't like the accommodations, but I was miserable at night. The days of singing were glorious and profound, but the nighttime was hard. My cabin was rustic and I felt very alone in it. I did not understand the light switch it was hard to discern where it was. And there was a kerosene lamp that I was too ignorant as of, it, of its properties to light it properly. There was no bathrooms in the whole place. During the night, I walked outside several times in the cold to pee on the ground. 
which of itself is not a problem for me. The cold was the main problem. I could not fall asleep as I was too cold. I could not sit up to read as there was very little light and the cold chilled me to the bone. It was hard to be alone in such an environment. My inner critic tells me I'm a baby or a weakling. But truly, are we meant to live by ourselves we are, when we are outside of our comfort zone? My mind drifts back to a time in the ancient days when I slept in a cave with warm furs and other human bodies to protect me. How can I be deeply happy living alone in a box, which is my apartment? Is that how humanity is meant to live? I adapt. We are nothing if not supremely adaptable beings. At breakfast time at the Lamas Foundation, I tried to talk about my plight to other attendees. I wasn't the only first timer who had a hard time there. Many supportive uh, comments were spoken, such as, the Lamas Foundation is not an easy environment at first. That was comforting to hear and made me feel less like a crybaby. Of course, I always want to remember the extreme luxury of getting a vacation, going to a rural retreat, singing with beautiful people. For that, I am grateful. But I have to say, I don't want to return to the Lamas Foundation. <laughs> That's good. That. Oh. Thank so you. much feeling in it. I loved it. And the descriptors were great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ethel is my first writing teacher in 1993 or two, 1993. Yeah, at Peace World. She led a writing workshop wow. and it was wonderful. Wonderful, Ethel. Yeah. Yeah, you, you also, Ethel, led a workshop for Church in Ocean Park. I mentioned that in another workshop. I don't remember when, but it was about... Uh, we meditated for a while and everybody wrote about their experience and everybody was calm and peaceful. And I was like raging. <laughs> this is in Ojai, right? Ojai. That's right. Yeah. Right. It was wonderful. Yep. <laughs> Great. Anybody else want to share? Okay, Carol. You know, I would. This one I did just write. I started writing it before we started, it, but I had the title, Death. By gray they moved they they move in a quiet seeming couple replacing ones that needed replacing no comment lest you think me intolerant both working and young middle-aged we speak politenesses from time to time spring comes then more talk before uh, then time more talk we're painting the interior, she says. It will be all gray, she says. Good for her, I'm thinking. I worry for him, the quiet one. So thin, so yellow, so gray. Seeing them together, then not. See her more often, him not. Is he gone? They're gone. Was it something I said? <laughs> oh. Uh. Interesting. That's fun, Carol. Wow, it was funny. kind of a true story, just in a different form. Yeah. So did they come back? No, the house was sold to somebody else. Wow. They, yeah, they weren't there long at all, but they, you know, she loved gray. You could see it. She had dark red hair. She dressed cute. And he was this other person. I don't think gray was good for him. Wow. <laughs> That's my interpretation, of course. Oh, of course. Anybody else? Uh, I'll read. Okay. I had two ideas. I was going to write about one, then all of a sudden this came up. Um, uh, my first trek. I never did any drugs in the 60s, even though I was in San Francisco during the whole hippie summer of love until 1971. It was early spring of 72 when my friend Bill and his girlfriend at the time promised to share some acid the next time they came upon some. One afternoon, one spring afternoon, they brought over some window pane, LSD on little blots of paper. You put it on your tongue and let it dissolve. Slowly, everything became heightened and a bit distorted. I was feeling giddy 
and we got into a car, his car and drove to the beach. Luckily, we, we lived close to the ocean and it wasn't too far to go. We had the radio on loud and got out of the car to sit by the water's edge. One of my favorite songs, My Back Pages by the Birds came on it. I took it as a sign that everything was unfolding in wonder. I felt the texture of the guitar lines rage through me and felt the energy of each wave that the ocean was giving as a work of art, dazzling me with, un, with its unending motion. We were the only people on this particular beach, so we stayed there quite a while until the breeze got cooler. But the coolness of the breeze just wrapped around me and, and slowly let me down. On the way home, we stopped for fast food that never tasted better. Later, I was taken back to my cottage and played some of my records. I remember my roommates coming in when I was listening to the Beach Boys album, Smiley Smile. And when it, I went into a long talk about how Brian Wilson could capture a kid childlike wonder much better than the Beatles did on Sgt. Peppers. And I went on and on about this. And my friends listened for the whole time, but were quite amused. <laughs> they were amused, did you say? Amused. They were amused. Oh, so I love fun you get little snapshots of people's lives. So much fun. So Ethel or Claudia, Ethel? Yeah. Uh, I've never written about my college years. And I decided, OK, I'm going to start with the first day. So. My first day of college was my second day in California, 3,000 miles from all my familiars. I was not in New England anymore. This was September 1965. The college, steeped in traditions of the 50s and before, had not yet really joined what we now call the 60s. Still in the future were the se sensitivities and causes that would so imbue our spirits and our actions just four short years later, when our graduation became a battleground between the armbands and the forces of the status quo. But back to that very first day, we entered the dorms strictly segregated still by gender. Freshman girls partnered with roommates in simple rooms, each with a single bed, a small metal desk, a modest closet, and a standard chest of drawers. Nothing on walls, tabula rasa in myriad ways. My trunk may or may not have arrived. I had my suitcase and a head spinning and eager to be filled with newness of place and of people, of sights and sounds and meanings in a new world of learning. I am slowly introduced to others in my sponsor group, led by a kind older student charged with our orientation to our new life. Joys and indignities all of us in leaving the protection of the dorm. They had, uh, I didn't get a chance to write about it yet, but they had a uh, weighing and measuring that the boys would do of all the girls as one of the freshman initiations, just oh. to give you a sense. This is Pomona College. You know, we didn't hear the last uh, sentence, so, or last two sentences, for some reason the sound went out. Oh. Could you repeat it? Uh, okay. Just go back a little ways, okay? I am slowly introduced to others in my sponsor group, led by a kind older student charged with our orientation to our new life. Joys and indignities awaited us on leaving the protection of the dorm. And there's lots more to talk about, but 
Um, well, could you say that again about the men weighing and measuring? What was that? Yeah, well, that I added that. I didn't write about it, but yes. Yeah, I know. This but... is one of the traditions for new freshman girls was to be weighed and measured by the older boys. Can you believe it? No. Wow. <laughs> Weighed, literally weighed, weighed and <gasps> measured. Yes. Oh my God! How horrible, Ethel. Well, yeah, and this is Pomona College. This is one of the Claremont College, the original oh, Claremont okay. College. You know, California. <laughs> this is 1965, so we've come a long way, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's part of the reason I've hesitated to write about my college years. But it's it's got me started. So that was great. I great. enjoyed re hearing that very much. If you could really feel the uh, uns. You're frozen. First, am I? Oh, am you. I we heard you could really feel. You could really feel the anticipation and the uncertainty of those first few hours. You know, and just I was right in that spot with you. It was wonderful. Thanks. Me too. So, Claudia, would you like to read? Yes, I can. I can read. Um, uh, life celebrates those who try. <laughs> As a little girl, I watched my dad invite my older brother to do so many things. Skiing, sailing, Boy Scout camping trips. And I remember not until one day when i was 10 there was some ski equipment left over and it fit me and mom encouraged my dad to take me with that way she only had three to look after while dad got me the energizer bunny i was beyond thrilled full of visions of success and expectations of enjoyment I remember how awkward the equipment was when we got there. Lace-up boots, adjusting bindings to release correctly, buckling leather safety straps, all done without my mittens on. I mimicked my dad's skating technique to get to the T-bar line. It wasn't natural to have long slippery sticks tied to my shoes. Falling, falling, falling. Now, in the T-bar line, falling again. Dad explained slowly to scoot into the path line, skis up and lean on the bar while grabbing the pole and, and and then the pole would just bump your butt and take you up the slope. Well, hmm, we when we went, we finally went, and I got so excited that my tips crossed. And when my tips crossed, I went boom. And my dad got off the T-bar, picked me up, and we went back to the line and did it again. So I, my first thought was how tough it was to think about keeping skis from crossing, poles from dragging, hand holding on, and don't sit. <laughs> My legs were tired already. We got, we finally got to the top. The next challenge was to get off. And I tumbled right in the path where everyone gets off. A scramble of skis, poles, and spindly legs held on by thin leather straps. Another kid landed on top of me and <laughs> they stopped the lift until our parents could untangle us and clear the path. I could tell my dad was embarrassed and questioning his decision to include me. So far that day, I learned the most important lessons, falling, getting up, T-bars and exiting T-bars. Wow, what's next? <laughs> oh yes. oh my god wonderful yeah so brave okay. uh, 
Good. <laughs> That's the first day of skiing. I totally avoided skiing. <laughs> I just... All right. Ah. So this is me. I had been dating Rick for several months. He was an assistant professor at UCLA when I was a grad student. We had spent time at each other's apartments and once in a while went out to eat, but he was nervous about whether our relationship was okay with university rules. And he was also fairly cool and detached a lot of the time. I had no idea where the relationship was going, but I was not at all brave about asserting myself with a boyfriend and did not ask him. November rolled around and it was time for Thanksgiving. I was not going home for the holiday and hoped that I would celebrate it with him. That this would give me more information about how important the relationship was to him. In fact, this did not happen. He called and said he had something to do and would arrive at my apartment around nine o'clock. Again, I didn't ask any questions, but had some Thanksgiving type food ready when he arrived, just in case. He shook his head and said he'd just come from Thanksgiving all afternoon and evening with his friends and was full to the brim, couldn't eat another bite. My estimation of myself shrank to about a cubic inch. Rick stayed for a while, seemed distracted, and then said he had to leave because he had no toilet paper at home. He had to find a store that would be open on Thanksgiving. I said, oh, I've got toilet paper. I can give you a roll. Take some. And by this time, he was shaking his head and walking out the door. I frantically ran. Oh, no. Where he's frozen. I frantically. OK. I frantically. Am I, am I on again? Yeah. OK. I frantically ran to my hall closet, grabbed a roll of toilet paper, and ran back out to the driveway where he had started his car. I ran up to the window and yelled and waved the roll at him, feeling like an idiot as he drove off. Uncharacteristically for me, I yelled, not even my toilet paper is good enough for you. And I threw the roll at his car. It bounced off the rear bumper and unrolled in the street as I stood there watching him drive away. When he broke up with me in December, a month later, he said he was no good at relationships, that he had a hole in his heart. Ironically, on January 1st, he died of a heart attack sitting at his desk at UCLA. Later, his mother told me that the autopsy showed that he had an actual hole in his heart between the ventricles and that the mixing of the unoxygenated blood with the oxygenated was part of what killed him. So oh. he really did have a hole in his heart. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, wow. that, that's good, um, Jean. Yeah. Good, good story. I mean, you know, it was that's story. Here, it was painful. <laughs> it but. was painful. I just will never forget that throwing the toilet paper at his car, you know? Yeah. I was really a very quiet person, unassuming, you know, just accepted what anybody gave me. And that was too much. <laughs> not, it wasn't the not being invited to Thanksgiving. It was the toilet paper. <laughs> oh my God. I can just see that, you know, I, I just, it's a strong image there. So oh. this, this has been so much fun. It's oh, been good. Funny. It's been really like good. It. So we'll do it again in a month and we'll see if we have enough people, you know, to continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. And did anybody see the chat? Donia said, uh, it's been delightful. She said, thank you, Jean, for these terrific sessions and to be able to see you all. I will stay muted and off video while I get ready to go to a doctor's appointment. There she is. Hi. Because I would like to hear your writing. Hi, Donia. Lots great. of hugs Thank to you all. I'll look forward to hearing the recording of those. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah, I can't get into YouTube these days because I'm waiting for the church to, I don't know, just hard. Oh, but I'll again, Jean, this was inspirational. It was good. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, you know, do it myself. You know how that works. You do it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I wouldn't write. 
you know, I wasn't going to write. I would probably waste time this hour. So this was fantastic. Thank this you. Good. Yeah, Thank I enjoyed you. it, Jeannie. What a nice group, too, really. You know, Fred's gone, but but he's, he's a great writer, too. All right. It's really well, good. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much. Tuesdays are my best. I know. You're a really faithful Tuesday to her. I am. <laughs> Goodbye. Kiss, kiss. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Louise, we're going to talk, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's talk. Okay.